I just wanted to remind everyone that we did purchase these daily devotions for the congregation. So if you haven't picked up your copy, uh, there are copies back there. And uh, we have a few extras, so if you'd like to share one with your neighbor, you know, pick one up and hand it to your neighbor, that would be great. And there's also this calendar back there that you can put on your refrigerator. And uh, it has little thoughts for Lent and Bible verses for the day. And uh, that's also available. And that ties together with our uh, midweek services on, and our theme for this year, Return to the Lord. So those are available there on the back table. Uh, please grab them on your way out uh, this morning. Let us rise and begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor a sinful being. Upon this year confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce unto you the grace of God. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you. will tread on the lion and the adder. The young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in be with you. O Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide the people of your church that following our Savior we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
The Old Testament reading for today comes from 1 Samuel 17. Then David took his staff and chose five smooth stones from the brook and put them in his shepherd's pouch. His sling was in hand and he approached the Philistine. And the Philistine moved forward and came near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. And when the Philistine took, looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. And the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of the host of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all his assembly may know that the Lord saves not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. When the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell on his face to the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone, and struck the Philistine and killed him. There was no sword in the hand of David. Then David ran and stood over the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out with its sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. When the Philistine saw their champion was dead, they fled. This is the Old Testament reading, or this is the word of the Lord. <laughs> The epistle reading is from Hebrews chapter 4. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, again it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. 
he suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and descended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Our text for this morning's meditation is from Hebrews chapter 4, these words. Uh, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. So our text. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, yes, it is true, isn't it? We do have weaknesses, don't we? Weaknesses. So the question is for us, what is it that we do? What is it that we do with our weaknesses? What am I talking about? Well, those aspects of us that we think should be stronger than they are, our weaknesses. Here I'm not talking about leg strength or how much weight we can deadlift or how far we could run without collapsing. Uh, What I'm talking about are temptations. Temptations to sin. To do or say or think that which is very appealing to us to do or say or think, but what we should not do or say or think. Now here the topic of food usually comes up, doesn't it? I mean, we even say that certain foods are our weakness. Can we really eat too much bacon? Or chocolate? Or ice cream? The answer, of course, is yes. And the reason that this is so is because such foods are so appealing to us, much more appealing than, for example, a bowl of lima beans. As a boy, I remember eating about 20 perfectly ripe plums. And then, of course, paying for it with severe stomach pains. So what do we do? If our weakness is bacon, we don't buy it. Chocolate, only on occasion. Ice cream, just a scoop. But of course our text, the weakness is mentioned in our text from Hebrews. Such weaknesses are not the appeal of of certain foods over others, but certain sins over others. Perhaps our weakness, for example, is gossip. It is for us, maybe so tempting to listen in at work when something is being spread about a co-worker. And to be honest, over the years, we have become so clever, haven't we, in sharing that information in such a way, so clever, that it doesn't seem like gossip at all. Just information. Vital information that others need to hear and to have. But of course, when we do share such information in whatever format, there's that tinge of guilt there, isn't there? That nagging feeling that what we said, we shouldn't have said. But, so we can reason and do reason, gossip is just my weakness. I can't help it. I just have to listen. And I just have to repeat and share and spread. In fact, people have become reliant upon me to provide them with the latest juicy tidbit. And it does make me feel so good to be seen like an authority, to be listened to, to be the center of something. Anyway, gossip is just my weakness. It's how God made me. If God did not want me to listen to and spread rumors, he should not have created me to have such an interest in them, to get a high off of spreading them. It's just who I am. I was born this way. So you do you, and let me do me. Now this is odd, isn't it? I mean, isn't it odd that we have turned our weaknesses, our sinful weaknesses, into our strengths? That is, we have, instead of admitting weaknesses and apologizing for weaknesses and working on weaknesses, that is, sins, we have embraced our weaknesses as that which define us. But then what do we do? 
Well, it seems like what we do then is find someone with even greater and more weaknesses on television or YouTube, and then we glory in the fact that we are not as obnoxious, as arrogant, as rude, as over the top as they are. Yeah, our weaknesses are ours. They define us, but they're not as bad as theirs. At least that's what I think is going on with so many shows on television. Otherwise, I don't have a way of understanding why millions of people tune in weekly to follow some person around and witness such things, glorying in their shame. The point is, of course, that our, is that our weaknesses are not our strengths. And our weaknesses are, in fact, just that, that within us which is not strong. And being not strong, our weaknesses are those aspects of our life where sin comes in and it just takes over. And then it's not our weaknesses that define us, but our sin, our sin and all its consequences that define us. But what can, then, we do? What can we do? Overcoming our weaknesses just seems to be impossible. Well, first and foremost, we confess. That's what we do. We confess that what we've done in our weakness is, in fact, more than a weakness. It is sin. And then we make, we make the commitment to fight. To fight. To fight against ourselves and to fight against our weaknesses. That is, after all, what true repentance is. True repentance is sorrow for the sin that we commit and then the commitment to try not to sin in such a way again. I'll repeat that. True repentance is sorrow for the sin that we commit and then the commitment to try not to sin in such a way again. But what then? What do we do then? Well, we do what the young David did when faced with Goliath. He did not rely on himself. He relied on the God of Israel, on the God of Israel in order for him to conquer Goliath. We need to do the same with our Goliaths, our weaknesses, and do the same without a slingshot, without a bag of stones, but with a sword, the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. Now, here we have Christ as our example, don't we? I mean, don't we think that Jesus was hungry when Satan tempted him to turn stones into bread? And don't we think Christ was wondering about the care and concern of his Father in heaven for him when Satan tempted him to try to prove it by throwing himself off the temple? It was not a moment of worship to accomplish everything it was to accomplish somewhat intriguing to Jesus, especially since Jesus was looking at three years of ministry, his crucifixion, his suffering, and death to accomplish the same thing. In other words, were not all three temptations of Christ actual temptations? They were. So what did Jesus do? He used the word of God in his weakness to fight back the onslaughts of the devil. His weakness, the weakness of Jesus, going without food for 40 days and nights. Yes, his physical weakness in that situation was a given. And our weaknesses are a given. We are, after all, born in sin and infected with sin and still must deal with sin every day. Sin does not, our sins, in fact, sin does not make us unique at all. It doesn't. Sin makes us common, incredibly common, just like everyone else. What would make us unique would be if we were like Jesus. Our weakness, fighting back the temptations of the world, the devil and our flesh with the holy word of God, not allowing sin, our sin, to dictate to us who we are and how we are and what we are. It's in fighting against the devil, the world, and our flesh that we truly discover. It's in fighting against, fighting against the devil, the world, and our flesh that we truly discover who we were born to be and who we are reborn to be through our baptism into Christ. So when we were baptized into Christ, what happened? Well, we were washed, regenerated, renewed by the Holy Spirit of God, as we read in Titus. Faith was created in our hearts, faith which grasps our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, with both hands. And through the hands of faith, what flowed to us was the forgiveness of sin, the forgiveness for the times we've allowed our weaknesses to lead to sin. 
Yes, through faith in Christ, the sin which occurred because of our weakness is forgiven. But something else, and here is what we need to note this morning. Something else occurred when we were baptized into Christ. And that is Christ not only gave to us his Holy Spirit, but with that spirit, Christ gave us courage. The courage to fight against ourselves, the courage to fight against the devil, and the courage to fight against the world. Preaching in 1522, Luther noted, in all temptations, in all temptations, we should keep our gaze fixed on the image of Christ and keep close to it. For Christ goes on. He goes on however much it hurts, and he is full of courage. Therefore, we must pray that he will also give us his courage and spirit, that we too may learn to be strong in the midst of weakness and to overcome in the days of affliction. In this way, Christ comes to us not as an image, but he implants in us his courage so that we too can endure. Therefore, whatever may come upon us, however much shame and blame, people will see that Christ our Prince perceives and overcomes it triumphantly. Therefore, we must ask him for courage that in the midst of besetting advers uh, adversities we may be made strong and be given power to overcome death. In this selfsame way, Luther continues, Paul set Christ before us in all his epistles, first as an example which we are to follow. Then, as he gives us the spirit and courage which he himself possesses. And this is the true Christian teaching. So Luther, preaching way back in 1522. So you see, Christ within us would give us the courage to function as we should, even with the weaknesses that we have. And even, we would hope, eventually overcome the weaknesses which we know and feel in our hearts right now. Now, that's not that we'll ever rid ourselves of all of our weaknesses. When one goes away, another seems to appear. When that one goes away, still another. Maybe here we should think, when it comes to our weaknesses, of something like dyslexia, and a friend in college with dyslexia. Thought about her dyslexia for a long time. You know, what's, what's dyslexia? You look at a word and you see it backwards. And I remember she explained that there are people who see words backwards, and there are people who see numbers backwards, and there are people who see both words and numbers backwards. They don't see them forwards. What if a child so born with dyslexia succumbed to that dyslexia and refused to learn how to read? Even though there are plenty of methods nowadays that have been developed to help children with dyslexia endure, indeed learn how to read. Would anyone do that? Would anyone say to that child, you were born that way with dyslexia. So there's no need for you to learn how to read and no need for us to teach you how to read. Would anyone do that? I certainly would hope not. If that's the case, then why is it, and why is it we simply throw up our hands when it comes to our weaknesses? when it comes to sin. Why do we just throw up our hands? Well, that's our weakness. We simply shouldn't do such a thing. But instead, through faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus, we should simply pray daily for the courage, courage which he has, that is, our Savior has, that he grant such courage to us to face our weaknesses as, in fact, our Lord and Savior did. Amen. Now may the peace which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. We rise and sing the offertory.
Almighty God, you led your ancient people through the desert and brought them to the promised land. Guide the people of your church that following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you disdain nothing that you have made. Create in us new and contrite hearts that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we would receive your absolution with true penitence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, preserve all catechumens and their teachers, all children and their parents, and every Christian home from the assaults of the evil one. As your Son overcame Satan in the desert by the word of God, so also give us the victory through Christ and his word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, since we sojourn in the wilderness of this earth, look upon our desire for peace, and by your mighty power defend us and our nation against all enemies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, send your holy angels to protect and keep us in your ways, that no evil may befall us. Gracious to behold the needy, the sick, and the troubled, especially Florence Engelbrecht, Mary Scholl, Jean Allen, Mary Hockena, Dora Weber, Jared Musoff, Jim Hesselgrave, Tanya Tolzine, Joel Schaefer, Ray Horton, Josiah Schaefer, Isla Mae Went, Jan Horton, Elliot Axtell, John Bradley, and Richard. Satisfy us with a long life and show your salvation to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we remember those who also celebrate birthdays this week. Linda Stenney, Donna Schmidt, Kevin Nelson, and Jody Morrell. Keep them mindful of their heavenly birth through Christ, that they may celebrate their lives here in anticipation of their eternal life with you in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, inasmuch as the adversary continually afflicts us and as a roaring lion walks about seeking to devour us, we implore you for the sake of the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, to help us by the grace of the Holy Spirit and to strengthen our hearts by your word, that our enemy not prevail over us, but that we may evermore abide in your grace and be preserved unto everlasting life. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You make us both to will and to do those things that are good and acceptable in your sight. Let your fatherly hand ever guide us and your Holy Spirit ever be with us to direct us in the knowledge and obedience of your word that we may obtain everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
That brings to an end our streaming service for this morning. We uh, thank you for joining us this morning, those who have been joining us from all over the United States, and we wish you a, a blessed week in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For those remaining for communion this morning, please rise. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It's truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, 